I am uh, Bonnie Bryson, and I'm a third-generation owner of a uh, co-owner of Bryson General Store. Inherited from my parents after I had my father inherited from his uh, his parents, who started it in 1910. All three of my generation, my brother, sister, and I, all had careers outside of the farm and outside of the the business, and have now returned home to to run the business in our own ways. And we're partners. Uh, some of us spend more time here than others, but we do have a, a lot of fun, have a lot of, uh, a lot of pride in keeping the business going. Uh, education has always been very important in the Bryson family. Um, if you go back to my grandfather's generation, they produced a, a, there was a doctor, a lawyer, a merchant, and then he had a sister that, as far as I know, didn't go to college. But all three of the boys, the sons of uh, J.D. Bryson, went to the University of Kentucky, what at that time was called Kentucky State College. Uh, Uncle Doc went on to medical school, became a physician in Fullerton and then later in Ashland. Uh, his brother Dart became an attorney in, in Ashland and then he desperately wanted to be here on the family farm so he came back here and became, was a school teacher and a merchant. Lee, when we talk about the history of Bryson General Store, one of the things that's often brought up is that it was established in 1910 by two one-room school teachers, Hughes Bryson and Elizabeth Bryson. So they got out of the teaching business eventually and, and the store became their, their thing. But it, it so impacted their, their way of life and how they thought and how they raised their kids and everything else. And I, I believe that uh, Hughes Bryson and, and your mother had some one-room school history. They did indeed. Uh, you know, the little one-room school I attended on White Oak, Mom and Dad attended that same school. And, he, and you know, Mom was born in 1900. And I was born in 1939, so there's quite a few years separating, uh, separating my mom and me. But we both went to the same, to the same school. My dad went to that school. Uh, it's just amazing how it seems we go in circles. And you know, here you and I are today, and we both certainly have many connections, direct connections. Uh, I believe my sister uh, taught you uh, later on. She certainly did. Uh, Laura Hayes, your sister, mm -hmm. was, was my fifth grade teacher. She was my sister's fifth grade teacher. So from a gen couple generations back, we taught your mom, then your sister ended up teaching three in my generation. And she was a, certainly a beloved, beloved figure. Anytime the county needed a school in a certain area, like here on Schultz, they would go to the landowner and say, deed us this plot of ground. <clears throat> we'll build the schoolhouse and when we're finished with it, it will automatic the land will automatically go back to you. So that was the Smith land and that's it. Same as it was with the uh, Brysons, as you know. And uh, so the Black Oak School there uh, afforded a school for all of the children of the area, including my brothers, sisters, and all my cousins, of which there were lots of them. And everybody walked to school, and it was less than a mile, but it felt like a mile at that time. And uh, I started uh, school there when I was six years old, and uh, had uh, the teacher was Thelen Mullins. And uh, whenever I completed the seventh grade, at that, my teacher was Samuel Mullins, and was through each year. We went to, down to Black Oak. I was out at McHale, and we went in there and we was just visiting. And uh, I remember the school teacher. Don't remember who he was, but it always stuck in my mind. He come back through the classroom. He 
he'd ask them kids, now what grade do you want to be in next year? So I went seven years to the same teacher. And uh, at the end of seven years, uh, McHale High School uh, also taught the eighth grade at that time. So uh, when you completed the seventh year, you went to uh, uh, start McHale in the eighth grade. But uh, the one room school thing, uh, uh, she taught one through seventh grade and uh, the seating arrangements was about grades over. And the uh, ones that in uh, the upper grades that was pretty good in school, uh, actually they'd be tutors for the lesser grades through. So you'd, you'd have seven or eight school teachers in there, but one uh, actual school teacher. The I guess the photographers would come around <coughs> to all of the county schools or the little outlying schools and take pictures and they would always be a stand-up picture with the students lined up along the side of the uh, building in front of the windows and there would be from the tiny little tykes I think they would even allow like three or four year olds on the day that they were going to take pictures because I can remember my brother Ray and even myself being up there on picture day and so we would have tykes all the way up to probably 18 year olds. Of course you uh, had the old pot bellied stove for heat and I had to go to the neighbors to get water and carry that in the bucket. Everybody drinking out of the same bucket with the same dipper and we'd take our lunch at the school and uh, back at that time, uh, lard would come in a four pound lard bucket, tin bucket. So that made a real good school lunch pail. And the Shules Creek was right behind the school there, and they put a good hold water over there. But you take like uh, cornbread and milk or whatever in that tin and take it there and set in the creek. And then lunchtime come, you go get your dinner out the creek you know the one room school what do you what do you say you know i always tell everybody my mother and father carved their initials on the outside the walls and when i came along i carved mine my brothers and sisters went to that school laura went to that school boots she went to that one room school uh, norman went to that one room school paul went to that one room school leonard went to that one room school uh, Rita and sue younger sisters went to that one room school all of us Grade schools of uh, our area were on Shules Creek. It was a Sunshine School, and then there's a Bryson Wandering School, and a Black Oak School, a Star School, a Dry Fork School, and Pine Grove School, and Loper School. And uh, that was over about a eight mile distance. Uh, originally, there was a log schoolhouse on the Black Oak property, and uh, which after they came along to build the new framed schoolhouse, they moved the original log schoolhouse to here on the Bryson property, which Bonnie has pretty much restored and it's a, a beautiful site we had right here on Schultz Creek. And a lot of the kids had to ride horses to get to school. And kind of the roads was down in the creeks in a lot of places. They had to ride double on the horses to go to school. Didn't matter how cold it was, we walked. I know it had to be below zero a lot of times. One of the boys, the bigger boys, would come in of a morning and build a fire. They had a stove, and it would be pretty warm when we got there. And I walked to school out of Scatlick, which was three miles. The fun thing was that there was a creek between the road and the schoolyard, and normally there was a culvert that you could cross over, but exciting times was when there would be heavy rains and there would be floods, and sometimes you just had to wade across the 
be flooding creek to get to school. We had one pair of snow pants. They was good and warm and heavy, but me and Bon had to take turns on who wore them. Get up in the morning early and, and uh, milk the cows, and then I'd get out and go to school in the winter time and unlock the school, and go in and get the far building, uh, an old pop bellied stove to sit in the center of the room, and uh, get it warmed up by the time the teacher and everybody came in. And some mornings I froze before I got the far built. <laughs> <laughs> it was rough. Then they would do the classes. She would start with the little ones, the primer it was called then. And then first they'd go up through the grades. Very interesting. The small, each one was a small class, and so if it wasn't your turn to be taught, I often listened in to all of the other lessons and would attempt to do assignments for third and fourth grade that had nothing to do with me being in the first grade, second grade, or third grade while I was there. When we moved there, I remember very well uh, the cracks in the floor, taking uh, chewing gum on the end of a stick and getting quarters out of the, through the tracks that people had dropped through the floor. I remember when Dad started building it upstairs, uh, we slept down, you know, I slept downstairs until he started in upstairs. I was the first one to go up there and it was by ladder and just no homemade wooden ladder. And then as dad fixed on it, you know, and, and um, we got situated, it became you know, more and more home. It was always a very nice place to live. And it was, it has served our family. I was always a little bit jealous that my sister got the one room school experience I never got. Betty has some wonderful stories about it. I was of my brother and sister. I was the only one who attended Bryson School, which is just down the road from Bryson General Store. And it was a one-room school. We had grades one through eight. Being a one-room school, we were heated uh, by a, a stove in the center. Having heat there, cold heat in that uh, stove, iron stove, was exciting one day. We heard this loud noise and I looked up and our stove had split and had fallen apart. There was burning coal, embers all over the floor. Everyone immediately ran out of the school. One of the older boys was instructed to run to the store because they knew there would be people there. And before you knew it, we had a man with a bucket brigade going from the creek to put out the fire and save the uh, school. I went to Black Oak School and it was very open, very cold. One time it caught on fire. Aaron, my brother, he always would go five o'clock every morning and build a fire in that old school in the old big pot village stove which was way bigger than that one. Some way, somehow, it got too hot and it melted through the floor, they said. Well, the, it burnt a big, huge hole and hell and whatever that uh, it didn't go ahead and burn all the way down, I don't know, but it didn't. Well, then we ha had to go down here at Bryson School for a year, finish out that year and part of the next. Bryson's school was uh, just right down the road here from the store. And in the, uh, the early 50s, my mom, Doris McDowell Carver, uh, she was the school teacher at the one room school. Uh, my brother, Billy, went there. And uh, I have other cousins, you know, that grew up on the farm. Back in those days, um, these were just little country kids and, and, and many of them didn't have a lot and she got to introduce hygiene uh, to those kids, a lot of them, and she always felt proud, you know, she got to teach a lot of little kids about, you know, washing their hair and comb and how to, you know, groom themselves and brush their teeth. All the little schools were little individual communities where people, you know, could gather and visit and know about what everybody was doing, but the kids, uh, you know, still all these years later from the 50s, 
those children were were friends then and they come back here and that's what they talked about was being in school with this one or that one or me or you know we all remember each other from back in those days uh, and if you think whatever happened there uh, somehow is part of you part of me part of this whole community part of a greater community of, of the nation and the world right there in that one little one little spot.